Okay, I have finally got this to say, stay put. So we're just gonna pretend that you can't see my Roomba in the background and that Gwenlyn isn't screaming and we're just gonna roll with this. Um, so today I wanna talk about uh, what I did for my goals for January and some of my February goals and go with that and see what happens. All right, so I have my handy dandy reading journal here always inspired by Blue's Clues, always. Also, if you haven't checked out Steve on TikTok, you're missing it. All right, so goals. Uh, my goals were to read uh, more indigenous literature, Appalachian literature, disabled literature, and translated literature. I have some general ones of wanting to read more backlist books as well. And so let's talk about those goals and how I did. Um, I read a ridiculous number of pages, so I'm gonna put the number here so you can see those, um, but uh, yeah. My goodness. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I read a, a lot of random books in January. And so closer to the end though, I was able to start on some of my goal situation stuff happening. Um, all right, so I wanted to read more backlist books and that's really what these all were. So I read some backlist books from my TBR cards and then I wanted to read a, this is also a backlist book, but also my translated book and let's see and then I read this as part of Erin and Danny's book club uh, which is now called the indigenous reading circle and this was their pick for January so this is what I read for that as well um, so I have all of these and I will put them linked down below and I put their their titles down there as long as the authors everything etc um, so yes I I mean, they were all fine. I really enjoyed them, but like nothing really stood out as super incredible for me. And I don't know if that's because I had a really bad mental health month and I just felt down about everything or if uh, they were just fine. So I don't know. I'm really excited in particular about Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge. Where'd it go? Here it is. Um, I would say this is probably my favorite backlist read. The first half of this is just so incredible, the way that she weaves all sorts of different kinds of fantastical elements into the story about this young girl living around the time of the Civil War, but she's living in Brooklyn and she's the daughter of a free black woman. And her mother is very light-skinned and she is not. And so she faced a lot of colorism, even as a child. And that moves forward into her you know, young adolescent years as her mom runs this clinic that serves both white women and black women. And the white women are comfortable with her mom working on them um, as a doctor, but they're not comfortable with her daughter as the assistant because her daughter has darker skin. And so I feel like there's so much going on and it's so well written, um, it's so vibrant and there's like a like hints of fantastical elements in there. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited to see where Caitlin Greenidge goes in her storytelling next because um, I never read a book by her before. I have um, the Will You Love Me, Love Me, Charlie Freeman. I don't know. I'll I'll put it on the screen. And so uh, I have read it. I own it. But she did sign one of my posters in my library because I met her at the Decatur Book Festival years ago. So uh, yeah, but she's incredibly talented. Very excited about the future of that. Um, so I made all those goals and then I also read End of Time Like the Future by Michael J. Fox, which is, uh, he's a disabled man, he has Parkinson's, as well as uh, some other complications, uh, like he had a tumor on his spine, which caused some long-term damage probably. But um, I, I feel like he really talks a lot about what it's like having multiple conditions and how they like combine together to create something wholly new and terrible. And I, I'm so appreciative of him writing about that and being very open and vulnerable talking about that. So very excited um, to, um, I don't know, I want to read his other books now. I know he's written some other memoirs. We'll, we'll get there, but I'm still on a book buying ban. And you might be like, Kendra, how is that going? It's not, like, I mean, it is, it is, it definitely is, but, um, I did buy a couple books and I and I 100% uh, blame Jennifer at insert literary pun here. Um, I saw her favorite books of the year and I went and bought a copy of The Future is History. Um, I really like Masha Gessen's work and they have such a 
wide range of topics that they speak on and they've been on podcasts and like all of these different things. So I've never read a book by them. So I want to read that. And then also this one in particular, um, Wintering by Catherine May. I actually bought the special edition signed UK copy because if you're going to break a book buying ban, you might as well do it right. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and then I think I, I ordered some books from the UK but I don't, I don't entirely remember. So we'll see. We'll see what happens if they arrive at my doorstep. And if I am right, it's Sarah Waters. And that's probably because of Mercedes and Jen Campbell, to be honest. Um, so I guess thank you to all of these wonderful women who have apparently inspired me to break my book buying bad. But, uh, you know, I feel like that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I have received some books for review, but that's different. That's the different category of receiving books. I don't know. Also, sometimes they arrive unsolicited. So anyway. Okay. So as far as goals for February, I really want to focus on reading uh, black authors from my backlist TBR as far part of that my backlist reading goal. So I'm just going to hold up a bunch of books that I have on my TBR that I just pulled um, that I'm very excited to read um, and to Hopefully I, I will have I have plenty to choose from. Let's just say the least. All right. So Memorial by Brian Washington. Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor. The Black, White, and the Gray uh, by Mashama Bailey and John O. Morisano. Call Baby by Morgan Jerkins. The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This Close to OK and So We Can Glow by Lisa Cross Smith. Blacktop Wasteland and Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Sourland by River Solomon. The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. My Most Anticipated Memoir, uh, Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. So this will probably be one of the first books I read in February. The Disordered Cosmos by Chanda Prescott Weinstein. They Were Her Property by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers and Black Futures. I'm trying to read one like coffee table like book that I have collected per month as well as just a general that would be nice but not necessary goal. And so I have a copy of Black Futures and so I am very excited to be able to get to it. Um, this is a gorgeous book and I've read parts of it but I've never read it all the way through. So I'm just gonna listen to the audiobook and go all the way through it. Um, it seems like a great time. I also have some ideas for my Appalachian reading to read a lot of the Appalachian poets and black poets from the region. Um, so that's very exciting. And so I have a bunch of them scattered around the house. I honestly don't know where. So we will all be surprised <laughs> to see what I pick up for that. All right, so for uh, my goal of reading more indigenous literature, um, I want to read um, Louise Erdrich's The Sentence and um, I also have a bunch of her other books. I went on a little bit of spree last year and bought a lot of her backlist titles in matching Harper paperbacks. So they're beautiful. Um, but this is her most recent one and one I've heard a lot of people talk about. So I'm very excited to read it. So for Erin and Danny's book club, um, the next book for their book club is Islands of Decolonial Love by Leanne Abedis Sumake Simpson. And this is um, stories and songs. So I think it's like short pieces. I think it's a combination of stories and poetry is what I'm gathering from looking out on the inside. The audiobook is, is fairly short. Um, that is not your toy. That is why she's upset. You stole her toy. Drop that. You know, she is usually the one that annoys him. No, you can't have it. Normally, she's the one that annoys him, but sometimes he does take her, her toys back and she doesn't like it. Um, yes. I tell him he has to be the bigger person, but he's like, no, I don't. <laughs> um, so those are some of the options for my, my TBR. And uh, I also have um, some books. Um, for 
And I also have a, just a whole bookshelf behind me of possible options for my books by disabled authors. So we'll see what happens. Um, I have some I really want to read that are recent or, you know, who knows what, but I'm very excited about those as well. And so my plan is to make you like videos of different TBRs that I have. So you'll just be able to see what my different options are in the books that might pop up during my, re year, my reading year in 2022. I think I keep saying 2021 in my videos now and I just have not made the switch mentally to 2022. I keep trying to think of Taylor Swift to help me like ground me in this year, but might not work as, as well as I would hope that it would work. Um, but yeah, lots of options for the different goals that I have. Um, I don't, I don't really have any books set aside for when I'm not feeling very well. I think Lisa Cross Smith, being that she writes like literary romance novels would be a great option for that because they're going to be um, less intense that way. Not that they're not deeply emotionally impactful, but I just really find her work very um, accessible that way because she does that combination of like literary romance. I also thought I had a copy of Real Life by Brandon Taylor and I looked over all of my TBR shelves. I cannot find it and I am like, did I just imagine that I bought a copy. I thought maybe I shelved it in my red section. I have no idea. I will also read Wintering when it comes in on audio and some books I will have to read when they come in on audio via my library and so they'll just they'll just be in there somewhere um, whenever that happens because I know like Fiona and Jane just arrived and in my library thing and that's like a linked short story collection. Thank you for joining me for the possibilities of my TBR. I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye friends.